All right, section four, investigating hidden mold. Oftentimes, small to moderate amounts of hidden mold can be easily kept under control by using high quality MERV 11 air filters that eliminate airborne mold spores, which are generally in the two to 20 micron range. Requires the AC and ducting to be clean. Objectives of section four. In section four, we discuss common sense approaches to investigate for hidden mold. At the conclusion of chapter four, you'll be able to describe the locations where hidden mold is often found, describe which locations generally are the most concerned and which are of less concern. Explain some of the solutions to keeping hidden mold under control if removal is not an option. For example, at times it may be best in older homes and or when there's not enough money to simply leave hidden mold where it is after eliminating the water source and properly sealing any openings. A common sense approach to mold exposure. Small amounts of mold growth, including mycotoxin producers, commonly occur in all homes, schools, and offices. For the majority of people, these present minimal health risks. The solution is to fix the moisture problem and clean up the vis uh, visible mold quickly. Resources spent characterizing the type of mold often could have been better spent on mold removal. A common sense approach to mold exposure. On the other hand, large areas of indoor mold growth present a more likely risk of exposure and adverse health effects. Large areas of mold growth indicate more extensive water damage, moisture intrusion in the building. For large scale problems, additional and more extensive remediation measures should be used, including testing both before and after remediation to protect both workers and occupants of the building. Degrees of exposure. The presence of mold growth does not necessarily equate to exposure. There must be a pathway for exposure to occur. And exposure to mold does not always result in a health problem. Occupants or remediation workers disturbing large areas of mold growth face greater exposure potential and thus greater potential for adverse health effects. Unless remediation can be done properly, consider methods other than removal to reduce exposure. Can sealing solve the health issue? Oftentimes, a contaminated wall or sealing cavity is best sealed and not remediated so long as the water source is fixed. If exposure has been significantly reduced by sealing, you may have solved the health issue. A mold remediation contractor will never recommend this approach. In old buildings, this is very often the best solution. And please note that when the insulation in a leaking exterior wall is blown in cellulose, hidden mold is almost always way bad. Degrees of exposure? Oftentimes, improving filtration by using a better air filter or leaving the AC fan on will reduce exposure to acceptable levels for all occupants, even sensitive occupants, if AC and ducting are clean. If exposure cannot be reduced to satisfy all and remediation is not an option, you may have to consider recommending relocating sensitive people to other areas. 
In this picture right here, it shows infrared pics. The dark cap circles of water wicking up the wall because drywall was not hung with a gap at the floor. Degrees of exposure. However, when there is mold in an air handler, humidifier, duct work, or ventilation system, even small amounts, there is always significant exposure that can affect sensitive people. Even small amounts of hidden mold growth in HVAC components can result in severe problems for mold sensitive people. Painting with protective coating encapsulating the inside of a nasty AC supply plenum after first carefully removing surface dust, dirt, and mold. Mold in walls. Any opening in ceilings and walls that could expose sensitive occupants to elevated mold should be sealed. Broken or missing ceiling tiles should be quickly replaced with new. Drop ceilings should be as airtight as possible to keep often moldy air from non-conditioned ceiling plenum out of the occupied space. Seal all openings to wall and ceiling cavities properly and promptly. In this picture, you could see the exterior wall was cut open to fix a problem, but there was no wall insulation. Mold on exposed wood. Oftentimes, there is mold on exposed wood in unfinished basements, wall studs, shown at the right, or floor joists open to the air. It's not a problem in South Florida. Sensitive people cannot live, work, or go to school in such environments. The wood has to be cleaned of mold and painted with mold inhibiting paint. Clean and seal. In this picture, you see exposed mold covered structural wood in unfinished basement. Visible mold. No doubt, visible mold on the surface of walls or ceilings will make people sick. But hopefully, few homes or schools or offices have visible mold is easily cleaned by choosing one of the several products at the grocery store that both clean and remove mold. In this picture you see visible mold on a closet ceiling from a roof leak. Mold under wallpaper. Hidden mold, even a lot of mold, behind wallpaper is not generally making someone sick. Best to leave it unless the removal can properly, properly, be done, properly be done. Hidden mold in the AC. None of the popular mold contractor training courses train mold technicians to properly inspect or remediate air handlers or ducting. As a result, Mold contractors, including inspectors and remediators, almost always overlook problems in these crucial areas. Since most of the time, it is mold in the AC and ducting that is making people sick, it is imperative that mold assessors be able to assess mold problems in AC and ducting. And this picture right here shows an AC supply plenum Black stuff is dirt and mold on original ducting, compared with new, the yellow color. Clean materials at bottom, which were changed out because that's all that could be easily seen. Mold hidden in AC or ducting. The only good way to determine if there's a mold contamination in the AC or AC ducting is by visual inspection. In some cases, one may need to hire a licensed AC contractor to remove the coils or even disassemble the entire unit to completely inspect for mold. The EPA bulletin on air duct cleaning is 
Should you have the air ducts in our home cleaned? And that is found at uh, www.epa.gov forward slash IAQ forward slash PDFs forward slash air ducts dot PDF. EPA duct guidelines. According to the EPA, duct cleaning has never been shown to actually prevent health problems. Studies have not conclusively demonstrated that particles, levels like dust, in homes increase because of dirty ducts. According to the EPA, this is because much of the dirt in air ducts adheres to duct surfaces and does not enter the living space. Mold contaminated fiberglass lined ducting is another matter. And please note, we do not agree with the EPA claim that duct cleaning does no good. We find that duct cleaning, if done properly and thoroughly, can often significantly reduce allergy-like symptoms in sensitive occupants. More complete treatment of mold hidden in AC or ducting. Optional materials. For a more thorough and up-to-date treatment of issues with mold irritation and air duct cleaning, see Mold-Related Indoor Irritation from Contaminated AC and Ducting at www.mold-toxins.com Fiberglass Lined Ducts or Plenums If you have fiberglass lined air ducts or plenums or insulation in the air handler and the insulation gets moldy, nasty looking, it should be either replaced with new or cut open and thoroughly cleaned by hand and then encapsulated. It cannot be effectively cleaned with standard duct cleaning procedures, duct cleaning equipment. Duct cleaning warning. Air ducts are often made from flex duct which has a thin and very fragile plastic lining. The lining cannot be cleaned using the usual rotating brushes that duct cleaners use for metal lined duct because the brushes can damage the fragile lining. For these types of ducts, duct cleaning typically means vacuuming out the supply registers, which is a good idea, and then spraying chemicals inside the ducting. Bad idea. Per EPA, no chemical biocides are currently registered by the EPA for use in internally insulated air duct systems. Cleaning flex duct. We've had success cleaning flex duct using the air care sidewinder product. It requires a very powerful two-stage air compressor and can be found at www.air-care.com forward slash sidewinder. And this picture right here it shows the sidewinder uses the thrust of the air jets to propel itself into the duct system as it loosens dirt and dust. Mold hidden in the AC ducting or plenums is bad. This black stuff inside the AC ducting and connection boxes is mold covered dirt on fiberglass ductboard. See the yellow arrow? Rarely does anyone look in this area. This mold was making the occupants sick. You do not need much mold in the AC or ducting to make sensitive people sick since the mold is readily dispersed into the living space. Mold on fiberglass ductwork. Oftentimes it is difficult or cost prohibitive 
to replace the fiberglass lined ducting. At our firm, we cut open the AC fiberglass plenums and ducting, and if contaminated, we vacuum, bleach, and then paint with special white colored AC sealing paint, encapsulate it, that includes a mold inhibitor. Any leaks or openings are sealed with mastic and AC sealing paste. This in our hands is better than replacing with new. Refurbishing fiberglass line ductwork. Our firm uses DP2545 encapsulant at www.designpoly.com to seal fiberglass duct lining because it, because it is very low VOC, does not smell, and seals well. In our experience, there are very few good choices for sealing internal fiberglass lined ductwork. We do not endorse any particular brand of sealant, but it is critical to choose one with low VOC smell for use in ductwork. No affiliation with DP. Mold and AC and ductwork. In this picture, it shows the yellow colored material is new fiberglass ducting, the AC contractor used to attach new air handler to original ducting and the dark colored material is mold and dirt on original fiberglass ducting left in place when new air handler was installed. Mold hidden in AC closet. If there is hidden mold in the AC closet behind the air handler for example even small amounts it can be pulled up into the AC system and disperse throughout the occupied space and make people sick. In the picture on the right, there was an air leak at the back top of the AC closet and the air handler was pulling moist, dirty attic air into the cool closet. The result was mold growth behind the air handler and sick occupants. Careful visual inspection for this hidden mold in an AC closet is a must. In this picture, dark color is mold on wall behind where air handler had been located. Mold hidden in AC closet. Many times the air handler drain line clogs and the drain pan overflows. Mold will often result. The picture on the right shows an air handler that had a drain pan overflow. Mold is growing on the outside of the return air box that the air handler sits on. Inside the box is full of mold. The mold inside the box is being dispersed into the occupied space making occupants sick. Even small amounts of hidden mold here can make people sick. Careful visual inspection is a must. Often AC components need to be cut open in order to inspect. In this picture, you can see mold on exterior of AC return air box. Much worse mold inside. Mold in wall cavities. If there is significant mold in a wall cavity, it is best to remove it. But if it cannot be removed, be sure to fix the water leak and then seal the cavity such as around electrical outlets or baseboards so that spores are not readily released into the living space. When can mold on a window sill make someone sick? Will a little mold on a window sill make someone sick? No. Best to clean off the mold and fix the leak, often old caulking, that is causing the mold growth. But if the wall under the window is casually cut open and there is heavy mold inside it, will be dispersed and will not only contaminate the nearby areas, but will contaminate everywhere, including the AC and ducting. Best 
to clean visible mold and leave mold inside wall if mold removal work cannot be properly done. Section 4, Wrap Up. You should now be able to describe the locations where hidden mold is often found, describe which locations generally are the most concerned, and which can often be left alone. Explain when it may be best to simply leave hidden mold where it is after eliminating the water source and properly sealing. Explain some of the solutions to keeping hidden mold under control if removal is not an option. This shows an infrared picture of moisture in a wall. Infrared cameras do not find hidden mold. They may find hidden moisture, but only if the moisture impacts the surface material. Beware of detailed mold remediation protocols. It is very often the case that neither the extent of hidden mold nor the precise cause or location of the water problem can be determined without first starting the remediation process, like opening up the walls and or ceilings. The idea that a mold assessor can accurately write a specific remediation protocol as to how much drywall to remove is a myth. Protocols must be flexible so that the knowledgeable remediation contractor can customize their work procedures as needed. Section Review Questions Review Question number one. Openings in ceilings and walls could expose sensitive occupants to elevated mold. Which one of the following statements is false? C. Mold technicians are usually trained to either inspect or remediate air handlers or ducting since this is the most common location for hidden mold. Question number two. If you have fiberglass lined air ducts or plenums or insulation in the air handler and the insulation gets moldy, choose all correct statements. I'm sorry, uh, choose all incorrect statements. A, B, and C. They must be removed and replaced with new. They cannot be effectively cleaned and renovated as new. The best solution is to spray the duct interior with biocide that keeps on killing. Question number three. Air ducts are often made from flex duct, which has a thin and fragile plastic lining. Choose the correct statements. B. For these types of ducts, duct cleaning, improper though it may be, typically means spraying illegal chemicals inside the ducting. Investigating hidden mold review. Question number four. Will a little mold on a windowsill make someone sick? C. No. It's best to clean off the mold and fix the leak, often old caulking, that is causing the mold growth, and only if you casually cut open the wall. Question number five. Sometimes small amounts of hidden mold are not a health problem. Choose the one best answer. A. However, when there is mold, even small amounts in the air handler, dehumidifier, ductwork, or ventilation system, there is always major exposure. And be sure to tune in next time for Section 4, Assessing the Extent of Mold and Moisture. Thanks for watching.